so many new areas. What's up here? The Enchanted Earth. So when they have a sparkle around them, that means there's something there, right? Weird. Um, what's up here? The Sleeping Village? Sure. Still have no health. Poor villagers. The master possesses them. It mustn't hurt them. Hurt guards, though. They seek out an object of great power. Health? Was I not supposed to do that? Smith's Monthly. Old man Willie Green of Gallows Town was awarded Smithy of the Season by our readers. His outstanding casts have produced many intricate and hard wearing iron goods and sculptures. Willie only uses the finest of metals in his work and is particularly noted for his magnificent busts. <laughs> Old man Willie was quoted as saying, Aye, when I get pumping on me bellows, there's no stopping me. It's all in the rhythm. Up and down, up and down. I've always been inspired by the stories of Stan, your iron hewer. <laughs> the greatest smithy there ever was. Okay. Can't destroy any of that. this huh health thank you damn okay a crucifix once stood here but the mayor took it Find a replacement, and see how the church should really look. Okay. No way to get in there.
Okay, so I do not want to attack her. The rune key is held aloft by the flow of water from the fountain. You may have to wait for the next drought. That door over there keeps opening. Whoa, whoa, whoa. and shutting. Where was it? No? Just that one, huh? Okay. Let's go. health back, which is nice. I don't think I'm meant to go in there, because that's water. That will hurt me. <laughs> so what exactly am I supposed to do here? Wow. Okay, I feel like I have to fight these guys. A good soul has been lost. What does that mean? Okay, where am I supposed to go here? I've got the blue rune. Oh, here we go. Don't go in there just yet. Is she meant to go over there? Meant to move. Oh, okay, I'm meant to move something over here, huh? Come 
Come on. Do I really still need the club? Bust of Mr. Shanks, landlord of the Troll's Head. To clean the statue, lower the pedestal. Okay. I supposed to lower the pedestal? <laughs> Get me out of here. Okay, what am I supposed to do with the head? Face melting metal. Like, seriously, what am I supposed to do with that? No, 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 no. apart. If we don't find the shadow artifact, Lord Zarak will have us mocking out the demons for the next millennium. What the heck are these guys? This is different. Ah. Can't do anything with any of that stuff. over there. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. 
got to do it. Oh, look at that. It takes my percentage down when I kill those people. Wow. Well, what else was I supposed to do? Tourist Guide to Galamir, Part 1. The land of Galamir is a wondrous land of breathtaking sights and adventure. If it's beauty you are looking for, be sure to check out the sights of the Enchanted Forest. Scale the heights and see the nests of giant dragon birds. Seek out weird and wonderful plant life. Go ooh and ah at the sight of baby dragon toads splashing about in the crystal clear ponds. Why not take a walk through the Pumpkin Valley? Pumpkin is Galomir's favorite dish, and about now the valley is just bulging under the weight of young podlings awaiting harvest. Interesting. Oh. Oh, the crucifix cast. Oh, I know where to, I know where to use that at. What's this book? Tourist Guide to Galamir, Part Two. If it's mystery you're looking for, then the seasoned adventurer should travel to the ruins of King Peregrine's castle. Yes, this is the fortress from which the fabled King Peregrine once hailed. It is said that the king's crown was lost in the dungeons below the castle and that the ghost of the region himself now haunts these cold stone passageways. Spooky. Why not take the swamps and seek out the mythical town of Mellowmead? This place was once said to be a place of fantastical arcane alchemy, but an age has passed since it was consumed by the murky swamps. Perhaps great treasure awaits any adventurer that can locate its watery resting place. Okay. What are all these? History of Galamir, Volume 4. The forces of evil were destroyed, but at a terrible price. None but a handful of the king's militia returned from that field. Galamir lost a whole generation of young men that day, including Canny Tim the legendary crossbowman and Fortescue's second-in-command, who fell in the first volley of arrows. Xerox's body was never found, though if it lies unmourned in an unmarked grave, then no one in Galamir would shed a tear. The shadow demons that had fallen under Xerox's banner were unnatural creatures that did not belong in the world of mortal men. The king declared that they be banished Entombed under the pure earth of the enchanted earth. Imprisoned within an impregnable box of the king's design, the demons were buried deep underground. Their tomb was sealed with a magical device that has since come to be known as the Shadow Artifact. Look, this is a really weird way to give a lot of exposition. <laughs> Heroes from History, a retrospective. Chapter 1. In addition to being the strongest man who ever lived, Stanier Ironhewer was unsurpassed in his skill as a blacksmith. He was equally happy pounding on his anvil at home as he was pounding on someone's head in battle. It was said that his only fear was the end of the village smithy as the focus of manufacture in favor of more centralized units. <laughs> as if. Uh... Chapter 2. Okay. Born a humble peasant to one of the nomadic tribes from the Eastlands, Blood Manoth Skullcleaver gathered an army of horsemen and swept over half the civilized world. When he finally died, attempting a single-handed attack on a garrison in the north while armed only with a spike on his helmet, he was the richest and most powerful peasant of his day. I guess we just wait Chapter here. Chapter 3. <laughs> Carl Sterngard spent most of his formative years under siege at his family castle. 
With his impregnable magic shield, Sterngard's motto was, the best form of attack is defense. Sadly, his shield couldn't protect him against poor eating habits, and he died during a post-battle feast while swallowing a large sausage he had failed to chew. Awesome. Chapter 4 Truly the hero's hero. Woden the mighty was fearless, single-minded, and uncompromising. Unbeaten in combat, he inspired raw fear in friends and enemies alike. <laughs> Not to mention in close family members and pets. Mm. Chapter 5. Trained from birth in all forms of combat, Imanzi Shongama was the warrior queen of a tribe of Amazons. The bold and the beautiful Shongama banished all males from her territory. Except the handful she kept on to mow the lawns of her people. Awesome. Chapter 6. A full-time mother and homemaker, Megwin Stormbinder had to defend her settlement from barbarian raiders while the menfolk were away on a hunting trip. She fought off repeated attacks, armed only with a pitchfork and a rolling pin, and with one arm holding her baby. Legend has it that the gods, impressed by her indomitable courage, intervened and added thunderbolts to her arsenal. She won the battle with a couple of bolts to spare on her husband when he finally returned. Chapter 7. Dirk Steadfast was a fearsome opponent thanks to his magic sword and a firmly held belief that only women defend themselves. Real men are always on the attack. He was a friend and contemporary of Karl Sterngard and was with him even to the end. It was whilst Steadfast was explaining his views on Sterngard's shield during a feast that the latter had his tragic and inexplicable accident. <laughs> nice. Chapter 8. Descended from the finest centaur, Bloodstock, Raven Hooves the Archer was the last prince of his people. A proud and haughty aristocrat, he was an accomplished hunter, sportsman, duelist, playboy, raconteur, and three times derby winner. Oh, okay, we're in the last one. Chapter 9. Captain of the militia in the time of King Peregrine, Sir Daniel Fortescue found fame when he killed the renegade wizard, Zerok. A career soldier raised in the royal household, he was adored by the men under his command and renowned for his loyalty to Galamir. It was said that Fortescue was always destined for greatness. With his square jaw, steely gaze, and thick shock of hair as black as raven's wings, Oh, he looked every inch the hero. <sighs> That's some reading right there. We have more books still. History of Galamir, Volume 3. News that Xerox's army had now taken the floodlands caused much concern. From this vantage point, Xerox could march west to take the enchanted forest. This sacred place would prove a bitter defeat if it fell into the hands of the evil sorcerer. It was Sir Dan Fortescue who once again led the king's militia to rid the demon host from the land. Yet the evil wizard was cunning and had prepared an ambush. Titanic battle ensued, of which history has never seen the like. It is said that the day would have gone to Zerok, but for the skill and valor of one man. Fortescue led the charge deep into the massed ranks of the undead, felling Xerox's bodyguard, the fearful Lord Kardok, and before finally succumbing to his own mortal wounds, slew the traitorous sorcerer with a mighty sweep of his sword. Yeah, a little bit of a lie there. History of Galamir, Volume 2. 
Rumors of ill-doing and dark deeds abounded through the land of Galamir. It was whispered that Zerok had employed the aid of shadowy demons to help build a vast castle. Under the cover of night, Zerok's dark army spilled forth from the corrupt haven. The army marched south across the Silver Mountains and through the Silver Woods. Soon afterwards, even the pumpkin lands belonged to Zerok. The folk of Gallows Town cried out for help. Save us, good King Peregrine. Retaliation was swift and violent. King Peregrine's forces, led by the brave Sir Fortescue, drove Xerox's army back from Gallows Town. Oh, there was much rejoicing, but the war was not yet over. So yeah, we're doing all these backwards. I saw. I'm sorry for that. <laughs> History of Galomir, Volume One. During the dark time that was Galomir's not too distant past, it was King Peregrine who thwarted Zerok the Necromancer and his plan to enslave the land. Zerok, once the king's mage, had fallen out of favor with the ruler for conducting outlandish experiments on the bodies of the dead. It was said that deep within Peregrine Castle, the dead were restless. The dead are to be honored, not kept as the playthings of alchemists, declared King Peregrine as he banished Zerok from the castle. All of Zerok's living dead were routed out and destroyed. Zerok, being an unforgiving soul, went into hiding and vowed to wreak his revenge on the king. All right, we have one more book left. What's it say? To whom it may concern, I must make haste for Xerox's men will be here within the hour. I have taken the crucifix from the church. It is the key to a key. I used the cross to make the attached cast. Then I had it destroyed. It is my hope that this cast falls into the hands of a just and good hero. Signed, the town mayor. Alright, that was a whole lot of reading. can use it. Go. Let's do this. Do I need to put something in there? I guess I do, huh? I don't think I have... Oh! There we go. Use that. There we go. Melt that sucker, baby. Crucifix. Whoa. Oh. Dear sir and madam. On my travels across Galamir, I have come across many mysterious and enchanting finds. However, that which filled me with deepest dread was discovery of the tomb of the shadow demons. The key to their dank prison, the mysterious shadow artifact, is now in my possession. Yours fearfully, the town mayor. <laughs> All right. Off we go. Oh. Oh, 
Oh, I can't see anything. It's back here. Nothing? Okay. Oh, use this to jump up. What's up here? Oh, is this how we're getting in? I think so. So what's going on here? What is this? Oh, okay. chalice at I've never seen it somewhere bingo all of heroes awaits and some energy and some other chests yeah. All in all, it worked out. Capture that greedy profiteer, the town mayor. Take him to the asylum dungeons. Give the fat boy a good going over. Locate the shadow artifact. Bring me back something nice. <laughs> okay. Where are we going this time? Over here. Bravo, Fortescue! Some of the other chaps wagered Zarok would be using your ribcage as a toast rack by now. But I knew you'd pull through. Here, I have a little extra something here I can give you. Could help the old quest. You want it? <laughs> what is it? Oh, really? Is that it? Weak. Weak. <laughs> <laughs> 